Yes, look at Craig. 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 <laughs> Nicholas. <laughs> so guys, congrats again. How does it feel to be in your first senior Grand Slam final? Yeah, uh, pretty surreal to be honest. I don't think it's it's what we expected. Definitely when we uh, entered the draw, we, we always kind of play to enjoy ourselves and that's that's the thing first and foremost. And then every win we have is a bonus. But um, yeah, we've just kind of been taking it match by match and, and soaking up the atmosphere and the crowd. And we're in a final, yeah, I wouldn't really expect it. But to do it with a good mate like Nick, uh, yeah, I wouldn't want anything else. How does it feel so for was you uh, to be in your first senior Grand Slam final? Um, yeah, it feels good. Um, I don't know. I'm, ex I'm excited. I don't want to repeat what Fernando said. I'm just looking forward to going out there again and, you know, having a chance to play in front of that crowd. Um, win or lose, it's going to be a fun experience. This whole week's been insane. Um, I feel like every time I go to the court, it's like my last day. You know, we're playing all these advanced doubles pairs. So, they're, um, you know, I'm not expecting to win. With, and then we keep pulling it rabbit out of the hat and I'm just going to keep <laughs> going with the flow, I guess. Well done, guys. I uh, just wanted to look at the final. Obviously, you've spoken a lot about the crowd energy and it's been amazing the whole way through. But what are you expecting in the final, obviously, coming up against a couple of other Australians? It felt like genuine away games for your opponents most of the way through, but a bit different in the final. You, you answer that question. How do you think it's going to go? Um, I think you've had generally more more in your corner than them. Um, so yeah, I'm just curious as to whether you anticipate they'll still be in your corner as much as they have been. Uh, hopefully. Wouldn't be against the idea. Um, at the end of the day, they can support who they want to support, but hopefully they're for us. We, we couldn't have asked for anything more as far as the, as far as the crowd support so far. I think, uh, yeah, there was a few in their match. There was a lot in our match, so we'll see. I hope, hopefully that tells a story. Uh, another one on the, what the crowd might be like for the final. Um, you've played all through up until today on... Uh, the ones, the courts where you can get people in on ground passes today was kind of like the discounted centre court um, pass. The finals is going to be 500 bucks a ticket. Um, do you think that might have an impact or how, how are you going to rev up a, a crowd that's <laughs> plonked a bit more cash out? Oh, these questions are so depressing. Like, we've got four Aussies in the final. Like, can we stop, like, dividing, you know, which, cra which crowd's going to go for who? Like, it's just amazing we've got four Aussies in the final. Ash doing her thing. Dylan's last Australian Open. Can we, like up the energy a little bit like it's fucking awesome can we like can we have some like hype questions or so i'd rather just walk out right now hopefully we can get as many people in the stadium as possible if that means sorry if that means uh Jesus. hopefully i don't know craig might not be happy with this but if that means like dropping a couple prices so we can fill the stands whatever can get it packed or whatever he's allowed i think it'd be the, the more the better the atmosphere would be unreal and that's honestly what we've been playing for all week the wins are a bonus but yeah. To see kind of the traction it's gotten and the energy it's gotten and, and how much everyone's supporting, that, that's what we thrive off. So hopefully we can have that. Well, the people just getting out and about and following Australian athletes. Honestly, so. winning is our second. It sounds stupid, but winning's been our second priority every time. We hope to have fun, enjoy ourselves, enjoy our time on court, and hopefully they, they feel like they've paid good money to watch yeah. us. Exactly. Uh, this week you spoke a lot of how you changed the perception of tennis, of doubles tennis this week at the Australian Open. Obviously there's a lot of uh, attention um, you were today on another court, the last court. The, the atmosphere was quite intense on time. There were some comments from Michael Venus, some negative comments. Today, I found it very much more balanced. And most of the opponents, and you also, you grew up in this sport. It's a silent sport with much more tradition. And I want to know from you guys how we can find the balance between this new atmosphere, like a festival atmosphere, mm -hmm. and the tradition of tennis. I think it's a bit difficult for some of the players. Um, well, I mean, look, like at the end of the day, I think tennis as a sport, as, as of now, has never been talked about as much. I think for the Australian Open, um, you know, for the sport, like we need more attention, we need more viewers. My, my goal is to only bring new fans that may not be following tennis to watch tennis. If they flick on a match and they have Thanasi and I playing an entertaining doubles match and they know nothing about tennis, if they watched that match just then, they probably would tune in next time. That's what I'm about. That's what I want to bring. I think that's how the support, sport's going to survive. Um, um, as for Michael Venus, I'm not <laughs> going to destroy him in this median conference room right now. But Zabaios and Granolas are great singles players. They've had great careers. And you know, I respect them a lot more than I respect Michael Venus.
So, you know, I think the balance was there today. The quality of tennis was amazing. And the, I think the festival atmosphere was still there. And I think they embraced it. They knew it was an incredible atmosphere. Zabayos took a selfie with us before we walked out. That's how you embrace an atmosphere. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Remember that? You know, not, you're not like, losing a match and then getting salty about it afterwards. It and I think, I think for the most part, it's not us trying to disrespect the opponents. It's us trying to get the crowd going to just increase the atmosphere. And then sometimes the opponents take it personally. That's what happened with the Croatians that we played in uh, the number one seeds. And that's why, obviously, Michael took offence to that. Um, it's not, we're not doing anything directly to them to try and disrespect. We're just trying to get the crowd even more hyped. And then some of them take it personally. Yeah. Like, if you ask the Bales and Granoles, I think they would both say that that was one of the fav probably one of the most entertaining matches they've probably played in, in, in front of the crowd. Oh, lads, well done on the week. It's been good to watch. Um, what are your immediate thoughts on coming up against Max and Matt? They've obviously had a great week as well. Yeah, I mean, they, they obviously play a lot more doubles than we do. Um, they almost, I think, play every week doubles. Um, I think I played maybe two doubles events last year or three doubles events max. And we definitely focus more on our singles, but I think we know what we're capable of and we play together and playing with good energy. Um, again, it's going to be a really tough match. I don't know if we're favourites or not, but... I don't. I wouldn't say so. They play doubles, sort of, every, as I said, every week, and they're real polished at net and real great doubles players. But uh, it's obviously going to be tough. But I think if we play how we've been playing, um, play with that energy, hopefully feed off the crowd again, um, and play relaxed and free, we can do well. The last three in the room, one here. Guys, why don't you tell us a little bit what's happening inside in the team uh, when big decisions are happening? You know that uh, four two and, and Nick has to to serve. Who is the captain of the team? How, how the decisions are made? Tell us a little bit what's happening between you two that now looks like a very coherent double well, team. Would, Tell us a little bit about captain. it. I wouldn't say any of us are a captain of the team. I think we, we both lean on each other at certain times. Um, you know, I have, when he's returning or when he's serving, I have full confidence in his ability. He's beaten some of the best players in the world. I know what he's capable of. I've seen it time and time again. I think when one of us is nervous or when the other one, you know, kind of is losing their head a little bit, you know, we kind of lean on each other. The other one, you know, if I see him a bit down or a bit like low on energy, I'll try and, you know, you know, let, raise him up a little bit. And he's trying to calm me down, which is very tough at times. <laughs> uh, <laughs> easy. You like, did well I've got an issue. You did well <laughs> um, But I don't know if we got a leader. You know, we just lean on each other and, and we just try and keep our energy up. Last over there. Uh, boys, it's, it's a great story. I think all of Australia is getting around you. Can, can you both just in a few words, could you just um, reflect on, on your friendship, sort of where it grew, how it blossomed, why you're so close? Because yeah, it seems like the chemistry on and off is, is uh, yeah, it's, it's encapsulated us all, us all. It's captivated everyone. I think it kind of just fell, us, fell into our laps a little bit. We were really young. We won our kind of regional events. And I went to Canberra. I think I've told this story a few times. And played a Kids Cup event. And that was the first time I saw Nick. He was wearing a lot of Jordan gear. I loved my NBA back then. And uh, we're obviously a few of the top kind of in our age group for Australia. And we just uh, ended up traveling a lot together, representing Australia together from a young age and kind of developed, developed all the way through. We'd play Counter-Strike till about 3 a.m. in Europe sometimes. And we just, yeah, we love our NBA and we just talk rubbish to each other. And I think we're just kind of, we're, we're different, but we're similar in a way as well. And we just get along. I think that's pretty much all there is to it. Last one. Yeah, yeah you spoke a bit earlier about how, you know, those people who aren't really tennis fans, they might be sort of peripheral fans, switch on the TV, mm. see the entertainment, and sort of, they're tennis fans all of a sudden, then you have the sort of purists who like tradition and like things to stay the way that they've always been, I guess. Yeah. I guess I'm wondering, can the two coexist? Does it have to be one well, or the other? Well, I mean, other? I think I've played pretty good tennis in the past, like to beat, I mean, I've beaten pretty much every player that's picked up a racket, and I've obviously had to play a certain level of tennis. It's not like I'm going out there putting on like a clown suit or something and like creating a circus. Like I've also played, I've won titles, I've won big titles, I've played the traditional way. And now I think I'm able to channel a different like fan base. I think that's only positive in my opinion. I think people just gotta be open. There's, you're always trying to develop a sport and grow a sport. Of course you gotta keep it within the boundaries, but I think if people are so narrow minded that they can't see that this is bringing a lot of fans and a lot of eyes, then I think that's their problem, honestly. I think the quality of tennis was pretty good today, don't you think? That's what it's about. It's about having a good product on court that people actually come and enjoy. Not, you can't please everyone, but hopefully the majority are happy with what they're seeing. We'll take three online questions now. And our first one, Craig Gabriel, Cross Court Promotions. Your question, thanks. Craig. <laughs> what, what I want to ask both of you is when you're on the court and the crowd is going crazy, 
what is it actually what does it feel like for you guys is it is it goosebump stuff can you actually hear yourselves thinking or can you hear the other one talking what what does that actually feel like when when it's at the height of um activity um it's very special um you know i think to be able to control a crowd like that not many players can do that i think you know i i feel like we we've, we've been very embraced um you know they could turn around and not give us any energy but they know that we're going we're, we're putting on a show we're bringing energy um i wouldn't say it's goosebumps but i feel like we do enjoy it it makes us kind of rise to the occasion like the match point he hit an unbelievable lob i think the the clapping and the roaring before before that point you know helped you yeah you know definitely definitely gets us going as i said yeah. before kind of where we're in the when we're in the match where i don't feel like the goosebumps but you get excited but i think it's more before the match the butterflies you get when you walk out there and kind of anticipation for the crowd's kind of roar when you come out. I think that's that's what kind of triggers you a bit. We'll take our second question from Reem, the national. Your question, thanks. Hi, guys, congrats. Uh, I know juniors was ages ago, but I'm curious, what do you guys remember of your run together to the Wimbledon title like eight and a half years ago, I think? Being a set and break. <laughs> you were going to say that. <laughs> Um, I, I don't. I don't remember. We went. We got in trouble for wearing Wimbledon headbands. That's all I remember. That's right. We had pink headbands on. As I said, it's more about having fun. Uh, we're down a set and a break first round, and then big fella put me on his back and carried me to the title. So forever in debt. Yeah. Just just put you on the back like today. I blew a disc. <laughs> and thank you. We'll take our final question from Paul Walsh. Paul. Yeah, congratulations, guys. Well done. Listen, Thanasi, we talked Davis Cup, Labor Cup, and what you're doing at the moment. Why do you think that these situations bring out the best in Nick? In Nick? I think, you know, he's, he's grown up in a team environment, as I said before. He obviously loves his basketball. And having someone to lean on, I mean, he does a good, good enough job by himself, that's for sure. But I think sometimes when, if things aren't going right, lose his temper, I'm there to calm him down. I think it helps both of us for sure. Um, I think it's just having someone that he can kind of talk to and kind of relay his feelings uh, when he's on court oh, and kind of no worries thank you bro. Um, I try and be <laughs> opening up and shit. I try and, man. Um, I'm trying to be a steady <laughs> steady head out there for him but also don't want to take away that energy and that fire because I think that that's what makes Nick Nick that makes sense it's the cutest answer I've heard I got you thank you everyone that concludes our press conference <laughs> with Nick Kyrgios and Thanasi Kokonakis cute bro